So we're just going to talk a little bit about what um, grace is. And I'm sure we'll talk more about it as we continue in the study. But um, I just want to look at three particular passages as we talk about the grace of God. And so in John chapter 1, in verses 16 through 17, we discover that it is grace upon grace that helps us receive of the fullness of God. It is, it is the grace of God that we have a relationship with God. It is by the grace of God that we interact with God, okay? Um, and in um, John 1, 16 through 17, we also learn that it is grace and truth were realized in Jesus Christ. The awesome thing about the person of Jesus Christ is that you have the truth of God and the grace of God all coming together and we see through him how they work, how we can walk in both grace and truth. It can be done. You don't have to pick grace or truth. In the person of Jesus Christ, we see how we live our lives in grace and truth, okay? In Ephesians 2, 4 through 10, we see that it is by grace that we have been saved. And we also see that God wants to show us the surpassing riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. And he tells us again that by grace, through faith, we are saved. Grace, salvation, they are a gift of God. A gift is not something that you earn. A gift is not something that you work for. A gift is a gift. It's just a gift. It's free. It's it's a gift. In Titus 2:11, one we're going to look at 11 through 14. I want to read, I'm going to flip. I want to read this passage. When I first read this um I was shocked because I didn't understand that grace was also power. And um, it is. And it's, it's, it's beautiful. So grace, I mean, um, Titus is late. <laughs> Titus chapter 2 verses 11 through 14 say, For the grace of God has appeared. Okay, the grace of God has has appeared. So this is from here forth, these next few passages, these next few verses, this is telling us what the grace of God does, okay? For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men, instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires and to live sensibly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Christ Jesus. Once then, you cannot separate grace in Christ. You can't do it. Who gave himself for us, there it is again, the gospel, to redeem us from every lawless deed and to purify for himself a people for his own possession zealous for good deeds. What is the grace of God? The grace of God is the gospel that Jesus Christ came, that he lived, that he died, that he was buried on the third day, he rose again. And that when we put our faith in him, we become new creations and he comes to live within us. The grace of God comes to live within us, bringing us salvation, instructing us how to live in this present day, and we continuously look for the return of Jesus to come back, okay? So, um, the grace of God is power. It's God's power, power to salvation, and power to walk out that salvation in this present age. So, it is by the grace of God, not by flesh and blood, not by any agency of man, not by any man, only by Jesus Christ and the grace of God. 
that is where our salvation lies. That is where our hope lies. Um, that is the gospel. If it's not Jesus Christ being exalted, if it is not his name being proclaimed, it is not the gospel. Okay. Alrighty. So that's uh, chapter one. And um, we'll start digging in chapter two on Monday.